But today, I want to talk to you a couple about a couple things. If you got your Bible, would you turn with me to the book of uh, Mark? The book of Mark. Uh, book of Mark, chapter ten. Mark, chapter ten. How many of you guys uh, uh, st in in the Bible? There's all kinds of different meanings, and if you ever study, there's a there's a class that my pastor, uh, my former pastor, brother uh, Pastor Oster, in 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 uh, Aztec, he's teaching a Bible college class that's called hermeneutics, mm -hmm. and uh, he's doing all that, and he's talking about the language of the Bible and how you how to interpret it and look at all this stuff. I love that was one of my favorite classes when I took it in Bible college, but one of the things I learned was, and I think I might have mentioned it here before when I preached, but the word bar in the Bible means, or in, he, in uh, Aramaic means son of. So my dad's name was Edward, just like uh, Pastor AJ's dad was Arthur, and he's Arthur. And, uh, and uh, so it was, if, if, I were, if I were Hebrew and I would be named after my dad, I would be Edward Bar Edward. <laughs> that would be Edward, son of Edward, or Arthur Bar Arthur, son of Arthur, you know. And so bar was always that, that simple three-letter term always meant son of. Um, and so when you see Simon, they talk about Simon in the Bible. As Simon Peter, they called him Simon Bar Jonah, which means he was the son of Jonah. And so I always remember that. And I think about, you know, uh, um, when I think about coming out here to, to this area and just driving along and, and, and uh, everywhere I go, and every city, every Small town that I drove through on the way here. Every one of them. I thought, I wonder if they have a good gospel preaching church here. And uh, I don't know. You know, some of them may not. And many of them do not, I should say that. And I, went, and I look and I see all the people. I see people that are walking down the street, walking their babies, riding their bikes, and all this kind of stuff. I wonder how many of those people have been told the gospel. You know, and everywhere you look, there's people. And there's everywhere you look, there's people that are wondering... Are they even being seen? And they wonder. I went to preach at a church in, uh, in um, Dewey, uh, Arizona. Dewey Humboldt, Arizona. Gateway Baptist Church. I can't, went down there. They were having a church anniversary. And they asked me to come and preach. And I went down there and preached. This was about five, five six years ago too. And I went down there and preached for him. And God told me. What to say? I got up behind the pulpit when the, when the pastor called me up, and I stepped up there, and this is the first thing I said to that church. I looked out, and it was a full, it was a full room, and I said, God has not forgotten you. This is what God told me to say. I don't know why. I had heard it from another pastor, and I was like, for some reason. That, and when I said that, and then I went on to preach my message, and this is not the message I'm preaching today, but I went on to preach a different message. At the end of that service, I had three people in that in that congregation come up to me and said brother that first phrase that you said hit me right in the heart they said because i've been coming to church and wondering does god hear me does god does god know what's going on in my life a couple of them were having problems they both worked at the same uh, company and the company was starting to they were there was rumors of layoffs at this company so they were praying that they would keep their jobs and they were worried about what's going to happen would they have to move their family all this kind of there's all kinds of things happening and so they were just so concerned and it was all weighing down on them and so when i stood up there and they heard from the pulpit god has not forgotten you they said wow they said god really spoke to me and, and they said i want to thank you for just saying that and that the message you preached and and it was and i said I'm, i don't even remember exactly what the message was but i'm just thankful that that uh, the word of god still touches hearts and the word of god still works the way that it's supposed to so sometimes we go through life and we feel like nobody sees us. Sometimes we can look around and go, does anybody even know what I'm going through? And we can think about that. And we, sometimes we'll even look at God and God, do you, are you seeing this? Are you seeing what, what's happening around me? Are you seeing what's going on in my country? Are you seeing what's going on in my life? Uh, and, and it's a wonder that if he does actually see us. And... Uh, I, uh, when I, I, like I said, I, I was a youth pastor for 25, over 25 years. I was a youth pastor working with teenagers, working with young people all those years. And all those years, I don't know how many times I worked with young people that felt like nobody cared who they were. Nobody cared. Nobody cares. 
And I don't know how many times I've heard over the years, teenage, especially teenage, I don't know what it's about, but teenage girls especially would say, nobody would care if I died. Nobody would care. And I was like, I care. I would care if you got. And you know, you see, I see, I, st- I started to see it on social media. Would anybody show up to my funeral? Would I, you know, if I died today, would you come to my funeral? And it was all, I'm like, why are you thinking about death all the time, right? It's crazy. But uh, people wonder, am I being sane? Do, do, do they know who I am? And so we're going to read a, a passage of scripture here in Mark chapter 10. And um, I want you to look here in, in Mark chapter 10 and verse number 46. Mark chapter 10 and verse 46. The Bible says, and they came to Jericho. And this is, this is Jesus is, is walking with his disciples. They're, they're traveling with his disciples. And it says, and they, so that's Jesus and his entourage there. They came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat at the highway side begging. And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus, and many charged, verse number 48, and many charged him that he should hold his peace. They said, hey, hey, blind guy, be quiet. (laughs) And and he said, uh, but he cried the more, the Bible says. He cried a great deal. And he said, thou son of David, He called out louder. He said, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. He stood still, the Bible says, and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. We know the story of Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. There's songs about him, blind Bartimaeus. You know, there's a bunch of, there's a lot of things about Bartimaeus. You guys know that we'll, we'll never know his name. We don't know his name. His name's not Bartimaeus, although that's what everybody calls him. Look back in verse number 46. They came to Jericho, and when he came out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. Now, we know that Bar means son of. We don't know this guy's first name. We just know that he's the son of Timaeus. Here's a guy who we don't know his first name. I don't even know if the people that were walking along the road knew his first name, but they all knew him, knew him as, oh yeah, he's the blind son of Timaeus. They did, maybe they didn't know his first name. They didn't know who he was. So here's this anonymous guy on the side of the road, blind, begging, and he hears a group of people coming by, and, and somebody says, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And he perks up. And he can't see anything, but he's heard of Jesus. He's heard what Jesus is able to do. He knows that he can heal. So he calls out just in the general direction of the people. And his eyes are blind. He says, he says Jesus of Nazareth, the son of, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He says, thou son of David. He calls him out. And the people are like, shh, be quiet, blind guy. And he calls out louder, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. And they were like, oh, would you be quiet? And Jesus said, have him come to me. They're like, oh, yeah, he wants to talk to you. Come on, on, get up, (laughs) come over. And uh, he's calling you. Uh, Sorry, uh, we were shushing you earlier. Let's go and talk to Jesus. So they bring him over. And Jesus says, what wilt thou have me do? He said, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And he, he saw, he, he received his sight from Jesus from that day forward. We can look at that, and people talk about Bartimaeus all the time. Blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. But we actually, we don't know that's his name. That's just, he's just a son of Timaeus. His name could have been Bob. Bob, the son of, Bart- the son of Timaeus. Could have been anything. But we don't know, and we'll never know. 
We'll never know what his real name was. But I'll tell you this. We may not know his name. We may not know who he was, but Jesus did. Jesus knows every, the name of every person in this room. He knows who you are. He knows where you came from. He knows what you're going through. He sees you. He's not forgotten you. Bartimaeus was on the side of the road, marginalized in society because blind people couldn't add anything to the society. At that time, in the Bible times, when you lost your sight, you were good for nothing. What could you do? We needed, they, needed people to be, they needed people to be carpenters. They needed people to be laborers, and they needed sight to do those things. And if you didn't have sight, you, were, you weren't a help to society. So here he is, just sitting on the side of the road, marginalized in society, and, and, and calling out uh, for, for, and begging for alms each and every day, just whatever he can get just to get through each day. And then when he heard that Jesus was coming, and he called out to him, and, he, and then suddenly Jesus stopped, and he called him, and, and, and Jesus saw him and knew who he was. He knew exactly who he was. We don't know his name. Everybody calls him Bartimaeus, but the Bible says he was the son of Timaeus, so we don't know his first name. But Jesus saw him. And the awesome thing about this is knowing that no matter who we are, no matter where we are, Jesus always sees us. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we uh, struggle with each and every day. And so we can understand that no matter, who, no matter what's going on in our life, Jesus is always going to be there. Sometimes it seems to me that people that have a, a handicap, uh, like, like a, 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 whether they're deaf or they're blind or both sometimes, you know, it's amazing. Some of, the, uh, some of the greatest songs that we have in our hymnal are written by a lady named Fanny Crosby. She was blind. She'd never seen, she'd never read the Bible. She didn't know, but she knew about Jesus. And she wrote some amazing, beautiful, it's still songs we still sing today. We might, I don't even know if we sung any this morning, but there's songs all through the hymnal written by her, by this blind lady who just loved the Lord because she knew that God saw her. And even though she was blind, she could see God. It's amazing to me that God always knows every person and, and, and knows everything that's going on in our lives. So when I go through my life and I start to think, oh God, are you really there? Do you know what's going on? It's not necessarily his fault that, that I'm not in touch with him because he doesn't move. <laughs> it's my fault. You guys remember some, you guys remember the old dial up, uh, not dial up, the old dial radios? Remember in the radio, I used to have, I had a cat, uh, my car, I had the radio, uh, I had an old, uh, Brother Reggie, I had a 1983 two-tone gray Ford Escort wagon. A little station wagon, man. Tiny little, I called it, and it had burgundy interior. I called it my spam can. I'm like, hey, go get in the spam can. I'll give you a ride to town. Amen? It was a five-speed manual transmission. I'm talking way back, all right? And the radio in that thing was, it was an AM, FM cassette player. You know how it had the little dial, and you push the cassette through the dial, you know, and the dial would flip up, and you put the cassette in there, that kind of thing. And, uh, but I remember the dial was broken, and, uh, it, it, you know, some, I would turn the knob, and the, and the knob would, would kind of move about an inch either way. But that's as far as it would go. It wouldn't go any further. So if I wanted to go over here to, like, 105 or whatever, I, couldn't, I didn't know where it was. I just had to keep going until I found a station. So I turned the knob, and I turned it up. This is, this, the thing with my stereo in my car was this. If I got in and I got to the station, I found the station. Because, you know, you're going through there, you're like, and then it would come up, and you're like, buy light beer. No, that's not it. You're going on. And you try to find the next station, and it goes on, and it's like, ha, ha, ha. No, that's not that. I don't want a Mexican station. So you're going on to the next station. I finally would find the station that I want, whatever it was, you know, and, find, and, 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 and then I would have that sweet spot where you dial it just perfect, where it's coming in nice and strong, and then I would tell my friends, don't touch the radio. <laughs> don't touch that dial. Don't do anything. Because if you just lightly touch it, that thing would go askew. And it would be a nice, strong signal. But as soon as it went out, as soon as the dial went off just a little bit, there was static. Amen. And when I think about that, I think about God. God does not move. That radio station never moved. It was on the same frequency all the time. I had to dial in to that frequency so I could hear what they were telling me. God never moves. 
When we think that he's not hearing us or we think that he doesn't see us, it's not him that moved. We got our life a little out of skew. We're not in tune the way that we should be. We need to get that dial back lined up with God and his word so that we can hear from him and know what he has to say. Now, I'll tell you something. He knows where we're at. He knows where you are. But we have to also make the effort. Blind Bartimaeus was on the side of the road. Could Jesus have walked right over to blind? He knew he was there. Could he have walked up to the son of Timaeus and stopped right there and just said, son of Timaeus, Bob, receive your sight. He could have, absolutely. But he didn't. Timaeus, or the son of Timaeus, blind Bartimaeus, had to make the effort to call out to God. He had to make the When he heard Jesus was coming, he called out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Shh, be quiet. No, thou son of David. He called out even greater. He had to make the effort so that God would know that he was serious about wanting to connect with him. Now, sometimes I talk to young people all the time. And I talk to people all the time, really. And they would come to me and they would say, man, it's just it's a struggle right now, Brother Ed. You don't know what's going on in my life. And it's, there's this, it's really hard at work and my marriage and my f- relationships and whatever it is. And, 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 you know, I've talked to young girls that said, I just, I just can't find a guy or whatever. And I'm like, why are you looking for a guy? Just follow the Lord and God will bring you one. And, uh, but uh, I, I would talk to them all the time. And there's all these people who are like, you don't know what I'm going through. Going, I'm just struggling through all these things. And I'm like, okay, I, I understand that life can be a struggle. Yes, I understand that. However, let me ask you this. Have you read your Bible today? Uh, no. Okay. Did you go to church last Sunday? Well, we had this thing going on. Okay, when's the last time you went to church? Oh, two weeks ago. Okay, two weeks ago when you were at church. What did the preacher preach on? Uh, you're not making the effort to connect but you want God to fix it all. But you're not calling out saying, God, I need you. We got a, Bartimaeus on the side. He made the effort to call out to God. I need to hear from you, God. God, uh, please see me. I can't see you, but God, please, Jesus, please see me. And Jesus stopped and said, bring him here. And they brought him over to him. And he says, receive your sight. And he received his sight that day. And he went forward. And I'm going to tell you something that's awesome that that happened. There's a story of, of another blind man. It's a fictional story, but it's a, he was on his deathbed. It was a man that had been born blind, kind of like Bartimaeus. But that didn't stop him from serving the Lord. He was very active in his church, always giving and never asking for anything in return. He, everyone loved this old man that was in the church. Children ages 6 to 60 would come up to him. Uh, they liked hanging around with him, and he was, he was always straightforward and just he gave good Christian advice and counsel from all of his years of walking with the Lord. And so you could probably say that he was kind of like the, uh, the epitome of, of Jesus, uh, of what Jesus talked about in Matthew 7, when he said, you shall know them by the fruits that they bear. This was that guy. He was in the church and he was, he was blind from birth, but he served God his whole, uh, for years and years in the church. And so one day he's at, he's, on his, he's at home on his deathbed. And one day the pastor of the church came to pray and talk with him. And the pastor, when he approached the man's bedside, uh, he said, uh, he looked at him and he said, uh, the old man looked at him and uh, he said, hey, pastor. And the pastor said, hey, brother. He said, I, I just came to talk to you and tell you, you know, everything's going to be fine. And the old blind man, just hearing his voice, he couldn't see him, of course. He said, oh, pastor, I know everything's going to be fine. I'm not worried at all. Matter of fact, I'm real happy right about now. And that kind of threw off the pastor because he knows this guy's on his deathbed. He's in his last hours of life. And threw off the pastor a little bit. And so here's a man that's ready to, to pass away out of this life. He's reassuring the pastor that everything's going to be all right. He said, Pastor, don't worry. Everything's going to be good. And to top things off, he said he was happy about it. <laughs> After that exchange, both he and the pastor were kind of quiet for a little minute. And then the old man, blind man, he said, Pastor, you know why I'm happy right now? And the pastor was starting to tear up, knowing that his friend was about to expire. He says, why, why are you happy? And the old blind man said, just think. I'm lying here about ready to die. And when I die, I'll close my eyes the last time. Because the next time I'll open them, I'll be able to see. 
And you know what? The first person I will see ever in my life will be Jesus Christ. That's amazing. He sees and he knows the first person. Bartimaeus had never been seen, had never, uh, and the Bible says, I want to receive my sight. And when Jesus said, go thy way, thy faith is made thee whole, the Bible says immediately he received his sight. So when he received his sight, the first, first thing he saw was Jesus, the face of his Lord and Savior. He saw him. And the Bible says he, re, he followed him and followed Jesus from in the way. From that day forward, he followed after Jesus. First person he saw. Now, we sing a song in our hymnal called Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Love that song. Classic old song. One of the verses says, I once was blind, but now I see. Because before we knew Christ as our Savior, we were blinded. The Bible tells us that the God of this world has blinded the minds and the eyes of everybody uh, th so that they cannot see the glorious light of the gospel. But when we finally see, and our, eye, our spiritual eyes are open, and we see Jesus, what an amazing, awesome thing that is to know that the God of heaven, who created this universe and has all the power in all the universe, created everything, knows our name, and is there for us to open our eyes to him. You say, Brother Ed, I know I'm saved and I'm thankful for that. And I know I'm going to see Jesus when I die. I'm thankful for that. Amen? Well, that's good. Let me ask you this then. How much have you thought about people who haven't seen Jesus? Who don't know Christ? People all around you. Family members even. I have family members that I know are not saved. I know people, and I, 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 people, I, people that I work with at different places that I've worked, people I've sang with, I've sang in, in community choirs and stuff like that that I know were not saved. People that I went to school with, I knew were not saved, sat right across the aisle from me, and I knew they weren't saved. They're blinded by the God of this world. And somebody needs to tell them so that their eyes can be opened and they can see Jesus. We have the answer. And it's our job to go and tell people. I'm going to talk about a little bit more this afternoon about that. But what I want to get across today is this. No matter where you are in life, no matter who, who, what you think that God doesn't see you, he does. Not only that, he knows who you are. We'll never know Bartimaeus' real name because the Bible doesn't give it anywhere in the Bible. Everybody just calls him Bartimaeus. But that's not his name. That's, a, that's a, an, an identifier that he is the son of Timaeus. We don't know his real name, but Jesus did. Jesus saw him. He got saved, and he followed Jesus. Everybody in here, let me ask you, do you remember the time when, Jesus, when you saw Jesus and he saw you? So I tell you something, Jesus is always looking at you. He's never looking away. He's never looking away. He's always watching you. Now, when I say that God is always watching you, or let me say this. God is watching always, let me say this phrase. God is always watching over you. Now, that phrase can either thrill you or terrify you. God is always watching over you. If it thrills you, praise God. That means you're trying your best to live for him, and you know he's going to take care of you. But if it terrifies you, you need to get your life right with God. Maybe you need to come to the altar and give up some stuff from God. I, I, just, I know the things that, I'm, that I've been involved with, things that I've sung, things that I've said, things that I've looked at. Whatever it is, God, I need to give it up to you. And God, I ask your forgiveness. God is always watching over you. Either it thrills you or it terrifies you. Everybody has one of those two things. If you're saved child of God today, and you're trying to follow the Lord the best you can. And, you're, and, and, and if you're here in church, that's a good start. Amen? You're being in church, especially when the pastor's away. That's a blessing. Being in church and following God, that's a good thing. Know that you are making the effort. And when you're calling out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Just like old blind Bartimaeus did. And when he did that, he received the Lord. 
and God and was able to follow God for all his life. So let me encourage you today, folks. God sees you. He knows your life. He knows what's going on. He knows everything about you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful, Lord, for the opportunity uh, to open your word today, God. And Lord, we see in this simple story how this man named the son of Timaeus called out to God. We don't know his name, God, but you do. And Lord, I'm thankful that you showed us this story that we can see that he, the first thing he ever saw in his life was the face of the Lord Jesus. And Lord, each one of us who have received Christ as our Savior, when our spiritual eyes were opened, Lord, we're able to follow you immediately in the way and to go forward with you. And I'm thankful for each and every person that came today, God. I pray you bless this time, Lord. If someone needs to come to the altar and pray this morning, I pray they do. Maybe get some things off their chest. Maybe get some things right with you. Maybe we just need to pray, Lord, and we just need to get